We are indeed very, very, very honored this morning uh, to have with us one of Morgan's finest and most distinguished and accomplished alum, April Ryan, as our keynote speaker for the 2015 Founders Day Convocation. April Ryan is a proud 1989 graduate of Morgan State University, and she is a 30-year journalism veteran who has been the White House correspondent for American Urban Radio Networks since 1997 and has covered three presidencies. She is the author of the best-selling book, The Presidency in Black and White, My Up close view of three presidents and race in America. And this book was recently named by NBC News as one of the 14 books to read during African American History Month. And I just learned today that Essence Magazine has named her book as one of the top 10 books in 2015. And the book has just won the African American Literary Show's best nonfiction work in 2015. All of this while she has daily responsibilities at the White House, including hosting the daily feature, The White House Report, which is broadcast to nearly 300 radio affiliates around the country. Ms. Ryan's coverage of the White House has taken her from the Oval Office to locations across the country and to many nations around the globe, to Sub-Saharan Africa, to Mexico, to Trinidad with President Obama, to Africa with President Bush, to the Gulf Coast during President Hurricane, uh, during Hurricane Katrina, I should say, with Mrs. Bush, to Haiti with Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice, to several locations in Africa with President Clinton, President Bush, and President Obama, and to many other national and international locations covering breaking news around the world. She has also conducted one-on-one -on -one interviews with America's highest ranking leaders and icons, including President Barack Obama, First Lady Michelle Obama, President George W. Bush, First Lady Laura Bush, President Bill Clinton, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, Vice President Al Gore, Senator John Kerry, and the list goes on and on. She's highly respected around the world for her abilities and her achievements as a broadcast journalist, and now I might add author, award-winning author. She's one of only three African Americans to serve on the board of the prestigious White House Correspondents Association. She was named in 1997 as one of the outstanding young women in America, and in 2004, she was named an American Swiss Foundation Young Leader, and she has appeared as a regular and a special guest or a host on NBC's Meet the Press, ABC's This Week with George Stephanopoulos, CBS's Face the Nation, NBC's Today Show, and the Tom Joyner Morning Show. In addition, her stories have been featured in national television newscast on ABC, NBC, CBS, MSNBC, and Fox. She sits on the board of trustees in her spare time of Cambridge College in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very, very pleased and honored this morning to present to you a Morganite, a proud Morganite who is making her way in the world, who is the consummate broadcast journalist, the consummate social and political analyst, best-selling author and White House correspondent. Please join me in welcoming back home Ms. April Ryan. April. Good morning, everyone. You can do better than that. Good morning. I know it's raining outside. Good morning. All right. Amen. <laughs> President Wilson, thank you so much. I don't like reading my bio at all. And while I was sitting there, I just said, wow, I remember being a student 
and I don't even remember my, and I'm going to be honest, I don't even remember my Founders Day convocation speakers. <laughs> but I hope you remember me. <laughs> and I thank you so much for that warm um, greeting and bio reading. And I also want to thank you all for being here. Um, 1985, I came to this university, and I never thought, never, 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 never thought that I would be in this space, in this moment, at this time. I am a Morgan baby, and I want to explain what a Morgan baby means. I am a Morgan baby, and I'm trying not to cry. My mother worked here for over 40 some years. Vivian G. Ryan in the Department of Student Activities. And she loved the students here. She loved the students. She enabled some of these students here. <laughs> and I really wish that she were here today. But many of the people on this stage and many of the people in the audience remember me as a little snotty-nosed kid, hyper kid, running around this campus, getting in all kinds of trouble. Dr. Stansbury, stop shaking your head. <laughs> But I was that child. I was a kid from Baltimore, Baltimore City. Not Penn and North, but Baltimore City. I was that kid from Baltimore City. Kid that was so hyper. One of the person on the stage, uh, Tanya Rush, she remembers me wherever she is. On, I see you back there. She used to look at me like, what is going on with this child? But I'm saying all this to say, if I can do it, you can do it. Yeah. If I can do it, you can do it. And being here on this Founders Day, it reminds me of so much that HBCUs, particularly this one, is a very special gem, precious gem. Schools like Morgan State University love you to success. I'm going to say it again. Schools like Morgan State University love you to success. Yes. Amen. You know, I planned to go somewhere else, but I wound up at Morgan. It was 30 years this year, my freshman year, 1985, a little snotty-nosed freshman goes to WEAA. And at that time, there was this man there who was in charge of WEAA, who had the best voice and still has the best voice you will ever hear. You talk to him on the phone and you're just like, oh my gosh, this man has a wonderful voice. His name is Kwaisi Nfume. <laughs> Where do you go? Where do you go to get that as your, <laughs> as your teacher? And he cracked the whip. But I'm going to tell you something. The, the, the prize about places like Morgan is the fact that years later, you know, he was only there. I mean, I got there. He was gone because he was, he was destined for success and greater things. And he's still destined for more. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. But where do you go? You go around the world with President Bill Clinton to Africa as they're having this big press conference with Nelson Mandela. And then after the press conference, I'm gathering my things and I hear, and I don't know how many of you remember, but Sam Donaldson, a quintessential journalist, Sam Donaldson comes to me in this booming voice, April, someone's here saying I have to find my student. And I said, who is that student, sir? And he said, April Ryan. And, and Sam Donaldson said, hmm. Kwaisi and Fume in Africa, South Africa. After a presidential conference, President Clinton and Nelson Mandela looking for me, his student. Where do you get that? Where do you get that? I'm also reminded of someone here who is the dean of the school, the globe. I'm sorry, it's new. I, I graduated from the, the Department of Communications. <laughs> and now it's got this illustrious name. What is the name, sir? Global Journalism, the Dean of Global Journalism and Communications, Mr. Dwayne Wickham. He loves these students here. Let me tell you a little story. Years ago, and he wasn't a faculty member here at the time, but this is the kind of thing that he does for his students now, loving to success. Years ago, when I was working at V103 in Baltimore and Heaven 600, one station would take you to heaven, the other one would take you to hell. <laughs> this gentleman, it's the truth. This gentleman came to me and said, look, you know, the O.J. Simpson trial was going on at that time. You remember the O.J. Simpson police chase? You remember all the stuff that happened? 
Well, he had a friendship with the late great attorney Johnny Cochran. And Johnny Cochran wasn't talking to anyone, but because of Dwayne Wickham's friendship with Johnny Cochran, and he saw, I don't know what you saw in me, but he saw something in me, and I had one of the first interviews with Johnny Cochran ever. This is what is here at Morgan State University. This is here at Morgan State University. You know, I was taught by some of the greats, the late Dr. Gilbert Maddox, Dr. Alan Kennedy, Professor Brian Norton is in, in the audience, the late Dr. Nala Bowden, Dr. Rosalind Turbord Penn, some of the greats are here, Dr. Ruth Sheffy, Dr. Stansberry, I never had your class, but I wish I did. <laughs> But we are a school of greatness, and I'm going to tell you why we are a school of greatness. And, and I knew, my mother used to tell me, my mother was really good at giving me the history of things. And she always told me that Morgan started out as a Bible college. And I dug a little deeper to find out a little bit about Morgan State University. As you've heard, the school was founded, created in 1867 as a Bible institute for young men. But then I'm thankful that the Baltimore Conference of Methodist Episcopal Church, of the Methodist Episcopal Church, went on to say, let's do a ministry and a college for young men and young women. So then beyond that, the idea broadened even more. In 1980, in honor of the first chairman of the Board of Trustees, there was a school named Morgan College. Now, think about it, in 1867, 1867, that was 148 years ago. But if you think about it, <laughs> that was two years after the US House of Representatives passed the 13th Amendment to the Constitution abolishing slavery in America. The amendment read, Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. So that means that in the midst of the struggle, still, even though we were free, they believed in the future. They believed in us. Imagine 1867 trying to educate black people, whether it's ministry or anything else. Think about that. One of the biggest fears of people who want to oppress and suppress you is an educated you. Is an educated you. You are here for education. So I give you this history and what I went through to let you know you can do it. I was hyper. I was running around. Dr. Stansberry shook his head. But you know what? How many years later, I'm questioning American presidents, and they call me by name. It's nothing but God. Yes, yes. And it's also an understanding of the history. Because if you don't know your history, you're not going to move anywhere. We have to appreciate what happened back then. It wasn't easy to educate African Americans and then build this beautiful campus brick by brick. I want you to go back to your history class and find out about 1867, find out about 1865, find out about President Kennedy freeing the slaves and we didn't even know we were free. Juneteenth, the Emancipation Proclamation. I want you to go back and find that out because once you find out your history, you will say, never again. You will appreciate days like this. You will appreciate having the Dwayne Wickhams as the dean of your school, the Kwaisi and Fumes who, who went on. I mean, he left WEAA. He was, I mean, and, one, and the great thing about Mr. Nfume, the honorable Kwaisi and Fume, the honorable Kwaisi and Fume, <laughs> who I adore. One of the great things about him, you know, people use him as an example when it comes to races, elections. You won your city council seat by three votes, correct? Three votes. You're here in Washington. They go back in the history books and talk about Kwaisi and Fumi. This was my program director. This was my teacher. He cracked the whip, but that was my teacher. That's excellence. He left the city council to go on to do what? Congress. He left Congress to do what? The head of the NAACP. And look at what he's doing now. He is here to help us move forward.
So I say to you, my story, I'm surprised. I'm surprised. But I'm so thankful if it were not for Morgan State University, if it were not for that college, if it were not for that, that, that Bible Institute for the young men, we would not be here. And you know, education is something that we really need to take seriously. And talking about traveling the world, I, I've traveled the world and I've gone to China and I, I've seen how the students there don't grumble. They're in school almost all year and almost all day into the night and look at their test scores. Been to Sub-Saharan Africa, some of the poorest villages. They have crumbling buildings, but those students are running to the schoolhouse to learn to better their future, to get out of their existence now. But what are we doing? Barely coming in. Education is the key. You know, this was my start. It started opening me up to understand what life was about. But you need to learn now because once you get out of those doors, you have to be a sponge because more learning is on the way. And you're not going to get a degree or a piece of paper. But I think about our ancestors. I think about my, my grandmother and how hard it was to obtain a degree. My grandmother, who had no type of formal education, she said to me, she would always say to me, when I was in North Carolina, when my mother would send me down there when I was too hyper during the summers, <laughs> she would say, get that piece of paper because no one can take it from you. Get that piece of paper so no one can take it from you. And the sad piece about it when we talk about getting that piece of paper, do you know the HBCUs that graduate the most African Americans in this nation? Do you know? It's not Morgan, unfortunately. It's Spelman and Morehouse. The graduation rate of African Americans is the highest. It should be Morgan State because you've got a beautiful facility. You've got teachers who will love you to success. I was on this campus when buildings were crumbling. And I was in the communications department. Forgive me, the Department of Communications, but they can attest to it. Dr. Norton, you, Professor Norton, you know that. Some of my equipment didn't work, but guess what? I was determined to make it. It's all on you. You have to have that determination and know your history. You have to. And what about Grandma Moses? Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman said something to the effect that I was like a neglected weed, ignorant of liberty. There is no excuse for us to be ignorant today. There is no excuse for us to feel neglected today. We have a gem. We have a gem in Morgan State University. W.E.B. Du Bois wrote in 1903, the problem of the 20th century is the problem of the color line. In 2015, it's still a problem. They pushed, struggled, and tried back in 1867, what's the excuse now? Education is the key for us. And you young people have more power than you know. And if you're armed with education, my goodness, what could we do together? And what is really encouraging me today is we're not standing for it. Young people have led every movement globally that we've seen most recently and back in Dr. King's time. Am I telling the truth, Mr. Infume? Look at what's happening right now. We're not standing for it. Look at what's happening at the University of Missouri, Yale, Berkeley. Look at, what, look at what's happening. Look at what happened down the road. Penn and North, Freddie Gray. It's up to you. If you're armed with knowledge, we won't let it happen again. But I'm going to say something and give you something. I'm going to end on this note. I totally threw my script away. But, but I'm going to end on this note. I had a chance to interview President Obama on the plane going to Selma, Alabama for the anniversary of Bloody Sunday. And it was one of the most mind-altering and life-changing moments of my life. One of the most mind-altering and life-changing moments of my life. You know, to watch what happened on TV, to see the movie Selma, 
it doesn't do it justice. We were on that plane going to Selma. And President Obama in the conference room on Air Force One, I asked him, I got the first question, I said, Mr. President, I said, people are talking about post-Obama or post-racial. And he said, you know, he said, with all humility, my election does not equate to the landmark decisions that have happened, the Civil Rights Bill, voting rights. But he said, yeah, it was historic. But he said, you know, we still have things to do. There's still more going on that we have to conquer. And he said that his was to bridge the gap legally. And you know one of the ways that you can help him is by being educated <clears throat> and staying at Morgan. A couple of years ago, he said, by us being educated, you know, he told me, he said, you know, if we didn't have a degree, we would not be in the Oval Office at the time I did another interview with him. Education is the key. I hope that I leave this podium and impart with you that Morgan State University should not be taken for granted. Yeah, it's that, that university at Cold Spring and Hill and Lane, but guess what? It's that shiny university now in your eyes at Cold Spring and Hill and Lane. Morgan, I thank you. After that, you just want to end convocation. Um, you, you know, uh, April, um, yes, uh, President and Mrs. Obama live in the White House, but uh, April Ryan almost owns the White House. Um, during the times that I have been invited to the White House, and April has been there, the White House would, of course, have these seating charts, and so they say, okay, you're going to sit over here. And so she comes into the room, trust me, you know, at least, what, three times? She said, well, what? you're not sitting here. You're sitting on the front row, right? You're the president of mortgage. Follow me. And so I just kind of get up and follow April. And all of a sudden, I'm sitting here almost shaking the president's hand. And so uh, I really appreciate the fact that her spirit, if you will, is a true spirit. And she takes the Morgan orange and the Morgan blue everywhere she goes, including the White House. And thank you very much, Ms. Ryan. Uh, for and so uh, now I'm going to ask you to uh, come forward again for a special presentation. <clears throat> uh, I would like to uh, give this special uh, presentation to Ms. Ryan, and it reads as follows. Uh, Morgan State University Presidential Citation. 2015 Morgan State University Distinguished Achievement Award. Presented to April Ryan, broadcast journalist, social and political analyst, best-selling author, and White House correspondent for American Urban Radio Network. I, David Wilson, President of Morgan State University, congratulate you, April Ryan, for your long and fruitful career as one of the nation's most prominent and distinguished broadcast journalists as veteran White House correspondent and as best-selling author. I commend you for your bold, insightful examination of the politics of the White House, your informed and unbiased analysis of the racial sensitivities, issues, and political struggles of the nation's last three presidents, and the unique urban and minority perspective that you have brought to the news and to the national conscience and I applaud you for your courageous and high-principled contributions to America's conversation about its history, politics, diversity, race relations, and changing demographics. Founders Day Convocation, November 12, 2015, David Wilson, President, and I'm gonna ask the Vice Chair of the Board and Regent Wilkerson if they would also join us for this presentation to April Ryan, our Morganite. Congratulations.